Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're gonna do a little assembly and maintenance on this big old guy right here. This is the, um, what the heck is this thing? Guys, I'm having a rough day. So I know it's by this company. As you can tell here, this is just fresh off of my table here. This is the Editions G, uh, there we go. Um, the Editions G Bullet Knife by Goody Van Poppel. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the Dutch there. But either way, it is a, uh, it's an interesting little piece here. And I'm going to take it apart. <laughs> All righty. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and pop this guy open. Um looks like t10 there or is that t15 that looks bigger than t10 wow okay let's try popping this open um t yeah let's try t15 yeah t15 is the story here all right i will not argue with bigger fastness never not once will i argue with big fastness I've probably argued with big fasteners at one point in the channel's history. See, that's the problem with running a, a long-running channel, is that sooner or later you're going to contradict yourself on roughly everything. Like, oh, the sky is blue. Nope. Not exactly. Best of mine. Well, actually, it's a little gray at the moment, but whatever. Anyways, um, interesting little piece here. Actually, the maker of this, the, 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 the of the editions, G solely. Crap, that needed a little bit of talk. Um... The uh, maker of this actually contacted me at one point in time and said, you know, hey, Nick, you interested? Honestly, I actually said no to the guy. Um, and my reasoning for that is that these are a limited run sort of thing where it's like a one run and done. And that honestly drives me nuts. I I really, really dislike uh, limited run sorts of knife making just because it feels like none of the knives ever get great. They never iterate on them. And as a result, you end up with a bunch of stuff that's just like it's good, but it could be much better. And so I really dislike limited runs. And so I actually said to the guy, you know, I, I got to be honest, I, it looks really nice, but I'm kind of not really interested in doing that uh, down the road. You know, I'm not interested in supporting that. I hope that you are able to, it looks nice, but I, 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 I hope very much that this is not the long-term plan for your company there um, to do these limited run things. Because it just, like I said, it annoys me. And as a reviewer, more so, it's difficult because if something's already sold out by the time that it's, you know, that it becomes available, it, it, there's very little point to doing anything with it as a reviewer. It's just like, well, you know, great knife. You can't buy it. Have fun. You know, I get enough complaints about things that happen to be out of stock at the moment the review comes up. So anyways, I said no to the guy, but then actually my buddy Christian ended up picking me one up. And it was, you know, very nice of him. Um, and, you know, so now it's on my table. Might as well take a look. But uh, as a gift, by the way, that is. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm a little bit torn in that regard. It's still, I don't like the... Uh, limited run thing but uh you know hey why not right if it's here and given to me by a friend why not um let's go ahead and pop this loose there we go so what i just did by the way is i took my rat bastard enigma hobby tools guy there and um oh, sorry someone's blowing me up there but um and just use that to pop the scales apart a little bit here tight tolerances let's go ahead and pop this the rest of the way loose here there we go all righty, a little bit of thread locker involved, but not too bad. Pop this loose. All right, so need to remember that the big guy, well, actually, it's the only way it could go. So, oh, it's made by Lion Steel. Interesting. The grind's not too thick. All right, well, hey, I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks. Um, interesting, interesting. Um, good milling and whatnot. So, yeah. And then there's the G, and then there's the little dude next to an L. Not quite sure what that little dude L means, but I'm just going to assume it's something interesting. Put these things off to the side for the moment, and we'll go ahead and uh, put things back together here. So I'm going to go, what am I going to do here? I'm going to clean it out, uh, and I'm going to do so using some rubbing alcohol. If you're ever curious about the tools I'm using for my disassembly, go on ahead and uh, check out my knife disassembly toolkit video. But anyways, so uh, yeah, that's how this guy ended up on my table through a long and circuitous route. You know, I occasionally feel bad when I, you know, have to tell a maker like that, no, but it's also, you know, I don't know. At some level, it's 
it's one of relatively few chances I have to stand up for the community in what I think might be a better approach. And also in that particular case, with limited editions, it can be really, really tough. Um, they don't seem to have been selling out so super quickly, so I, I feel okay still making the review, because uh, at least at the time that I'm filming this, there are still some available. But uh, it's always just tricky, and I get so much hate for when I review something that's not immediately available for purchase. It's like, good God, guys. Um, but, you know, yeah, that's life sometimes. But I really do hope that, uh, you know, the maker of these guys sees the light and decides, you know, well, maybe we can have a second run. You know, I don't care if you run, you know, mark him as second run or something like that. That's fine. But I, I feel like the idea of, oh, it's super collectible is sort of a, a fantasy. It's a wet dream of, of high-end makers that, you know, people are looking at these like, wow, amazing. Mine's only one of 300 of a knife that, you know, is you know, not like, it's not like made by freaking, uh, I don't know, Stan Wilson himself, it's not <laughs> Michael Walker sort of affair, but anyways, whatever, so going ahead and cleaning this guy out, use a little bit of booze down there, and um, clean out the stop pin track, this lion steel marking here is interesting, um, I was wondering who the factory was, um, I mean, it's well done predominantly, and this is evidence that Lion Steel apparently can actually grind the blade thin, which is nice to see. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's always fascinating when you get one of these brand new makers popping up to figure out how they're making their stuff. Because, unfortunately, it's very often the case that uh, these things are not made at home, so to speak. Very often people will use an external factory. Oh, come on, fan. But, uh, whatever. It'll turn off at some point in time. We will work through this in the meantime. Just cleaning off this screw. Looks like there was some kind of thread locker or something on there. Construction on the whole, though, is pretty good. Oh, I should clean off the bearings. That's important. There we go. Pour some rubbing alcohol again. I think I already plugged the knife disassembly toolkit video. If I did not, this is a chance to plug it. Oh, ay, ay, ay. You know, when a good, when a disassembly goes well, it's, it's really, uh, you know, helpful to the soul, but sometimes, sometimes disassemblies go wrong. This is not going wrong, by the way. This is an unrelated rant. Um, but, you know, I will occasionally have something where it's like it's threadlocked shut, or it's just really poorly designed such that it's almost impossible to put back together or something like that. And that can really be frustrating to me. Um, you know, it's like, come on, man, you have one job. And so I, 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 I struggle with those, and I'm on the heels of one of those at the moment. Where it's just like a freaking just train wreck of disassembling proportions. But luckily this one, this one's palliative. This one's helping my soul a little bit. Go ahead, and, and I'm using a bit of 10 weight nano oil here. Boom, boom. Drop that down there. Beautiful. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, I'm doing this. I'll put a little bit more of the 10 weight right in to get the 10 ball hole. And then use this little needle guy here to distribute this. One thing to highlight here, a little detail, but a nice little detail. This right here is the detent ball ramp. Uh, so that'll help the detent ball get it back up onto the knife a little bit more readily. Is it a big deal? No, not remotely. But it is a nice little touch. Did I put any on the... I don't think I did put any on the pivot, but now I have. There we go. The Exxon Chabaz has now visited the pivot, so we are good to go. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Now I just drop a little bit more oil into here. Well, there. That was a little much, but that's okay. Rotate to distribute. We should be good to go there. All right, next step. I need to... I like this pivot collar, by the way. Nice. I need to put these little uh, tchotchkes back onto the, uh, I suppose standoffs is the proper term, although tchotchke works too, right? Um, put these little guys right back onto this area here, and then I got to keep them in position until such a point as I get the, um, get everything back installed properly. All right. So, in order for things to pop back together, I may have to remove tension on the lock bar. Actually, so I've got the pivot in place. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'll start by putting a little Loctite on there. 
just because I'm going to need a little of it anyways, so this way I can just tighten everything up at the end. Put a little Loctite on there, then I'm just going to kind of very roughly, not roughly in terms of, you know, wailing on it, but just it put the, 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 the pivot in at some minor tightness. Then what I can do is come in through here and basically pull these through, hopefully using the screws themselves. So, uh, where was I? What was I using here? Is it T10 or T8? It's T8. All right, so I'll put this back in my handle here. Put this through there. Beautiful. Ah. There we go. See right there, so that pulled this in through the other side. And I'm just gonna, you know, put it roughly. I'm not gonna fully tighten things down yet because I wanna make sure everything's in alignment before I go crank it on anything. Let's go ahead and slide this into here. And again, my hope here is that as I, ah, there we go. This should allow me to basically, again, use the screw to pull this the rest of the way into position there. Yeah, beautiful. And then I'll do the same thing over here. And that'll let me go through and then fully tighten things down at the end. I've got to show you this, but centering was largely good. It was maybe slightly towards the sh uh, show side. But uh, here we go. One thing I'll highlight here is that this is doing a very nasty thing where the, the screws actually slope down to the bottom of the screw. Um, that's not a great idea. Like, aesthetically, it's not unattractive, but it has the result of it. It, it can, A, add a little bit of extra wear on your drivers, and B, um, it means that the uh, it's very easy for you to slip out of the, the, basically slip out of the screw as you're tightening. All right, there we go. So that's fully tightened. No blade play. And we are currently... Slightly favoring the show side. Okay. I'm going to see if I can tighten the pivot down a little bit further. I don't think I can, actually. We are slightly favoring the show side. Do I have any blade play? I have no blade play. All right. So what I'm actually going to do then is actually try and back out these back screws here. Just to make sure I don't have any kind of tension stored up in the system here anywhere. Okay, now that that's done, we are very slightly favoring the show side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply just a little tiniest bit of force in this direction as I tighten these back down. This may be black magic here. I, I don't know. Maybe white magic either. It's just magic, I guess. But uh, sometimes that does seem to work. Now we're very slightly, again, favoring the show side. But that said, the action on this is just freaking beautiful. And um, there you go. For what it's worth, this particular knife comes in its little case with a thing in nano oil. So clearly they're recommending that uh, particular lubricational path. So uh, yeah, anyways, there we go. We are all disassembled and maintained. The uh, bullet by the, 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 the good even bopple guy is all set up here. And uh, we can be done with this particular video. Keep an eye out for the full review here coming up, and I uh, hope this has been interesting. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.